When designers are creating a new product, they have to check that the design is suitable for the task needed. One way of doing this is to make a model of the design. Often, making a model improves their understanding of what the final product should be like, resulting in improved designs. There are lots of different ways to model designs. The type of modelling used will depend upon the product being designed. Virtual models might be made using drawing software on a computer to see how the parts fit together. Software can also be used to model how an electronic circuit works and to calculate the values of the components to use in the circuit. Physical models might be made using cards, styrofoam or even a 3D printer to see what a final product might look like. For complicated products such as robot arms, several different types of model might be needed. One example of where modelling is used to design complicated products is in the medical industry. Dr Thomas Burton, a research fellow in Biodynamics Imperial College London, uses modelling when creating measurement units to help people with arthritis. In this instance, what we're looking at is specifically patients with arthritic needs and ways of measuring that in a non-invasive way. That means not causing any discomfort to the patient. And what we use are these inertial measurement units. These are very similar to the devices you have in your mobile phone today. So by fixing these to patients in a set position, we're allowed to calculate how much they move their knee and if there's any unnatural movements. Uh, we use modelling to look at knee joint because it allows us to simplify the problem. It allows us to isolate the particular parameters that we're interested in and investigate those without having to consider the whole picture. Uh, in this instance, we're able to toy turn these joint angles that we see on the screen into joint angles that we would see in someone's leg in a simplified way. It allows us to analyse them around what we're interested in. We use prototyping in engineering and science all the time. It's, it's basically makes us, allows us to have an iterative process. I mean, it's very rare that you actually get it right the first time round. And what a prototyping does is allows us to iteratively move step by step through a process. So we can start off with something simple and then we can get more and more advanced further on. Modelling products in this process keeps design costs down to a minimum and leads to greater success and a greater chance that they will meet their needs. In this case, making sure patients get the best possible treatment.